Hello, uh, good morning, or good evening, or afternoon. Here is Milan from AV Fabric, uh, and welcome to another video covering integration between the IP Fabric platform and different systems. Today, we will focus on the PRTG monitoring suite. The PRTG monitoring or network monitor is a flexible solution covering standard health check uh, with ICMP, HTTP, or SNMP protocol or standard telemetric monitoring, plus many other types of sensors, including reading the API data. Today's approach is quite different because we will be catching the trends created in the IP Fabric solution. Now, understanding the trending in your network environment is an essential element for many, many reasons. Imagine you can start with a number of automatically discovered devices with IP Fabric or follow the trend about uh, the number of BGP routes on a specific route reflector. It's your choice because all data is available in API. In this short example, I will show you how to get API-specific data about the endpoint and payload to follow the particular trends. The first one will be collecting data about the number of discovered devices with IP Fabric. The second one will be obtaining the number of ARP records from all network gateways, including firewalls, routers, or L3 switches detected globally. And the third, and this, this one is very interesting because it's quite different. It will be identifying the number of unreachable NTP servers globally. And now let's get to the point. So now we are in the PRTG system and what we did, we created the library of uh, all the sensors that are related to our IP fabric server. So we have uh, the number of discovered devices, uh, the number of ARP records and the number of NTP unreachable sources. So if you want to create a sensor, you just go for the sensors, add a sensor. The first thing you need to select a device or an object in the PRTG that you want to assign the sensor to. So we go for demo four, continue. And now this is the important part because we need to find a specific type of the sensor we need to use for the, for the API monitoring. And this one is called the REST. Uh, in this particular example, we are using the REST custom beta sensor. So it's preparing the sensor. And all these settings needs to be filled in to uh, read the data from the IB Fabrics API. But so we, so we don't have to bother with that right now. We will check all the sensors that we have ready and I will show you all the settings that you need to create or modify for, uh, for all the sensors we have. So for the number of discovered devices, if we want to see how the sensor is built, we need to go for the settings. And uh, here we have to some basic data like uh, sensor name. Uh, the request method is the post. Let me just expand a little bit. And this is one of the most important parts is the post data. Uh, then you need to select the user and the password. By the way, the user for the uh, that will read the API data has to authenticate first via GUI. Uh, then you need to define the headers. And the, more, the most important part is to define the REST query or the API endpoint correctly. So now where to get all these data? If we want to read the number of discovered devices, what we basically need to do is to read the number of devices in the inventory. So if we go to the IP fabric, we go to inventory and devices. And here we have the device inventory data. And here are the items we have 617. If we want to know where to get the rest information or the API data, we need to click on a table description. This is the API endpoint, and this is the request payload. So this is basically what we need to copy. The important part is if we want to read all the, late, all the last snapshot, so instead of snapshot ID, we will insert just dollar 
last, as we see in PRTG sensor. The other important part is that you need to define or into set the quotation marks for every uh, key in the dictionary. Just make sure you do that. Otherwise, the, the API will not be read correctly. Uh, the pagination issue can be set to limit one and start with zero. In that case, you will only be provided uh, only with one line as a response. And uh, then I mentioned that the snapshot ID doesn't need to be a snapshot ID if you want to read just the last snapshot. Then you set the user, password, the header type, and the query. And the result is, we can check the live data. In the meantime, I was uh, switching the snapshots. So what we are seeing here that uh, at this particular time, there was a little increase in the number of uh, discovered devices. Then I switched to a very, very small snapshot with just 11 devices and I loaded back another snapshot with let's say 620 devices. And the beautiful thing about it is that we can see the trend. So with every new snapshot, we can see how many new devices we have in the system. And this is the live uh, data, so it's a trend monitoring. If we check for other sensor, we can go for the ARP records. This one is very, very similar. So we go for the settings. And again, if we want to know where to get this particular endpoint and uh, this particular data or how to define a sensor, we can again go to the IP fabric and we will search for ARP. Because we are reading the number of detected records in all uh, you know, from the all gateways, uh, basically we are reading all the ARP records globally and we want to see how many ARP records we have globally. So again, we hit the question mark. So this is our API endpoint. Just make sure uh, when you go back to the PRTG, did you prefix it with slash API? Then the payload is pretty much the same. You see that there's no filter. We are reading the data from the last snapshot. Uh, we set the pagination this way to make sure we, the response will be just one line with the number of occurrences. And then we have the data. The third one, and uh, maybe the one most, the most important one, is to read uh, quite a different trend from the IP fabric. So if we go to the IP fabric, we know that the IP fabric is filled with a predefined verification checks, which are kind of a best practice for your network environment. Uh, one of those best practice checks is verifying how many NTP sources are unreachable. When we click on the verification like this, we will get to the definition of the verification. So we see that here we are basically checking if the source or NTP source has the stratum level 16, which means that the, the NTP source is practically not synchronized with the network or unreachable. So how to get to this value? Again, it's very, very easy. If we want to get to this value about how many NTP sources are having the stratum 16, we just click on the result and we hit a question mark again. And now we see what changed is the filters. So there are uh, predefined filters for the colors. So color equal zero is, is the green one, then the blue one is uh, color equal 10, and the warning like an orange is uh, color equal 20, and the red one or a critical one is color equal 30. So here we have the API endpoint. Here we have the filter, the snapshot ID will be dollar last. And let's have a look how the PRTG settings look like. So we go for the sensor NTP unreachable sources and settings.
And here it is. So there's no real change compared to the other sensors. It's just applying the correct filtering. And you can filter whatever you need in IP Fabric. So the limits are endless. And this is the result. This is our live data. So this is the time when I switched from uh, one snapshot to another. And then we are reading always the data from the last snapshot. So again, thank you for watching and uh, goodbye.